While the masses are distracted by the fiction they believe to be true in the mass media, a really frightening event has taken place. Follow the money, they say. So what happens when the biggest institutions and most powerful entities and families join together in plain sight, aiming to direct their energy against our current system? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. This is going to be a big video. There's no doubt about it. We're talking about the Rothschilds. We're talking about the Rockefellers. We're talking about the Vatican among other institutions, families, organizations. They are all grouped together today. This is not the Bilderberg Group, but it's going to sound a lot like it. We are looking into this issue and realizing the impact of what these companies, these institutions and people have under normal circumstances. And now they're coming out in the open and actually setting up this organization in order to have making change, let's say. I'm going to bring it to you directly from the source. I just found this. I thought it was interesting. wanted to bring it to you. Then we're going to look at the other issues, which as far as I'm concerned, go completely interconnected with it. They are all so important, but most people, they don't make that connection. This information I'll show you first doesn't make the connection to the next one and the dots don't connect. That's a problem. Okay. We need to understand how all these mechanisms work because then we can understand the whole machine. Let's go. Council for Inclusive Capitalism with the Vatican. This is the website. It's right here, inclusivecapitalism.com. You can see the link in the description. I don't have time to get into all the details. You got to see this site for yourself. I'm going to show you who's involved. The names are posted right here on the site. Making the world fairer, more inclusive, and sustainable. Join the global movement with other CEOs, leaders, and individuals transforming our economies and societies. Look, it sounds great. It sounds Sounds fantastic what they're doing they're trying to make change they're trying to better everyone's life right that that's great everyone wants to live a better life everybody wants that unfortunately the people that are in this list the institutions that are all here are the ones that have been doing the exact opposite they were part of the institutions and the central banks how they were all set up they were the ones that created this system of the haves and the have-nots their families the silver spoon type families they never even spoke Spoke. Some of these people have probably never even spoken to people that are, let's say, the average Joe. That's how completely far off they are from reality. You see these people on TV with the suits and ties and they get up there and they say to you, we're going to help the average person. We're going to help the farmer. We're going to help all of you. But they've never even spoken to those people. How can they get in the mindset of somebody like that when they literally, from their birth all the way up, they simply never even had a communication with these people it's ridiculous but they lie to you and i see the people chanting and cheering all the time oh yeah they're, they're gonna help me that person's gonna help me well this is a good business that's a good suit and tie whoever it is they are fooled by it why because the promises they make the people have to believe something i get it they have to believe something but time and time again they get screwed over and they just blame one person or the other it's that group is this group they're the ones they're the reason this group didn't an act that group did something to block that person you know what forget about it look at this the council for inclusive capitalism is a movement of the world's businesses and public sector leaders who are working to build a more inclusive sustainable and trusted economic system that addresses the needs of the people of our planet capitalism has lifted billions of people out of poverty but many in society have been left behind and the planet has paid a price there's a moral imperative to address this challenge we are taking action our members undertake measurable commitments to help create and then it goes in and shows you the list down there now this is something that is of course you can take what was stated there and say, well, you know what, this is a good thing, this is great, or you know, maybe you have an argument and so on. But there's more to it than that. You have to read between the lines. This is just a press release related to that, and I'm not going to obviously cover the whole thing, but you can see some more detail. The Council for Inclusive Capitalism with the Vatican, a historic new partnership between some of the world's largest investment and business leaders and the Vatican launched today. It signifies the urgency of joining moral and market imperatives to reform capitalism into a powerful force for good for the humanity. This to me, again, they're saying one thing, but look at who is involved. 
They're talking about billions of dollars here being put in. They're talking about how they manage, depending on who you look at, all of them put together, leaders representing more than $10 trillion assets under management, $2.1 trillion market cap, and it just goes on, okay? Of course, these are major institutions. They've got a lot of pull. They've got a lot of, let's say, control over their people and uh, others and so on. But you just look at how much they are able to do and then look at their track record. Follow the money. Here they are, pictured right here. It's not a conspiracy. Look at them. All of them are here in this list. You could see them at the top, and we're gonna go through. I'm just gonna cover just a couple of them. You're looking at MasterCard, Alliance, Salesforce, DuPont, United Nations. We've got others in here that I saw that were very important. Merck, you got Calpers, you got Estee Lauder, Johnson & Johnson. The OECD is involved in this as well. Visa, another Estee Lauder. BP, California State Treasurer's on here. The actual government pension fund in Japan, massive, they're just absolutely massive. Bank of America's in your state streets in here. And my favorite, Lynn Forrester de Rothschild. And you've got from the Rockefeller Foundation, the president going down here, Ford Foundation, and there are others, there are so many others. In fact, I think it's this link I have open where you can actually go through, see all of these different institutions, and then it shows their commitment. So I'm not gonna have the time to read through it. Highly, highly recommend it. Check out the links in the description. They basically break down what they're planning on doing. You could scroll through all the ways, multiple pages, what they plan on doing, what they say they're gonna do, and so on. Yeah, yeah we're gonna help the planet, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You all know that they want depopulation. Oops, I said it, doesn't matter. The channel's already censored anyway. And then I just want to save the best for last because Sir Evelyn the Rothschild, you know him, you've seen him, an individual that's been in and out of all the biggest and important movements in the financial system, and he's back again. This is important because it's not the Bilderberg Group. It's not happening in, let's say, semi-secret. I mean, it's kind of out now, but they're not even doing that. They're just publicly there. Another think tank, another group, another institution being set up, and they are so important. The moves in which they will take after the meetings, after the reports come out, I'm excited to see what they say. Um, not in a good way. There is excitement there and anxiety, more like it, and they are going to do um, certainly things that are not beneficial to the public. That that's for sure, because we follow the money, we see what they have done in the setting up of the central banking system and how they have created it and actually sold it to people along the way. Meanwhile, it's devastating to them and they ask for more and they laugh themselves to the banks that they own. So now I'll transition into the other material. This is what happens. You have these institutions, you have these organizations. They have been doing so much, so much, especially as they show here from the financial crisis up until 2019. And I mean, it's really accelerated in 2020. But anyway, state of inequality, richest Americans saw the greatest jump in income. So they've been printing money. They've been doing cash for clunkers. They've been doing all these different programs over that period of time, that decade. And yet what happens? The biggest of the big get bigger. They're doing it on purpose. They don't print money to help you out. They don't buy Apple bonds to help you out. Oh, well, I'll just buy the stocks. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. It is robbing from you as an individual, as a saver, as, a, as an employee in a nine to five job. You are losing out because the system of debt was created not to help out people who are buying seven shares of Amazon. It's to help those people like those you just saw and in those institutions who are controlling the system. Just a few get helped out, not this 1% group. That's nothing. More families than ever before have zero or negative non-home wealth. That to me is frightening. It just shows you a record high 30% of households have no wealth. What does that tell you about the situation that we are in today? So many people are struggling to keep up with the Joneses. And meanwhile, 
keeping up with the Joneses might not even be that good anymore based on what we're seeing in the statistics is truly unfortunate. Jobless claims rise more than expected after break from holiday. Look, they're up a little bit. The situation, we knew that as there would be more closures that this number would tick up. Obviously, most people were aware of this. And we'll just see where it goes. Does it go back above that million? Who knows? Regardless, there are 20 million people who are in need of government support today, right now, that were not on that, dealing with that situation earlier this year, and uh, it just shows us that millions more have been hurting from uh, simply a several month gap in here. As we look at this, it completely changed year over year, that's for sure. This article here is essentially just talking about how people have to actually steal in order to survive more than ever before petty crimes, and they're not taking, you know, PlayStation 5s and Xbox, whatever it's called, they are taking food and children, things for babies and children, things that they need to survive. And that just shows you that the situation has truly worsened today. This right here was comical because you could see the unemployment rate that, you know, you look at all the numbers I've provided you with, and then you see the unemployment rate, and it's comical because it's a lie. It's straight up a lie. This information comes from the BLS directly. If you are new to this channel, I always show you directly from the source itself. I don't read news articles and tell you that this is the facts. I actually just give you the source. Anyway, BLS.gov currently showing us a 6.7% unemployment rate. Meanwhile, you have millions and millions of people out of work. It makes absolutely no sense, but they publish this number. The mainstream media reports it. The analysts talk about it. And the masses, even if they're unemployed, will say, wow, uh, you know, I'm part of that 6.7%, I guess. I just did a video a couple days ago about the negative yielding debt, and now we have the world's negative yield debt pile at 18 trillion for the first time. 18 trillion dollars. I mean, I can't believe this. It has skyrocketed. And what does that tell you about the value of money today? Look at that. In just a short period, you know, it was at 17 trillion. Then it came down uh, towards the beginning of this year to what looks like approximately 8 trillion. And it's now at 18. So it's more than doubled the amount just this year alone. The value has been absolutely decimated. There's no other way to put it. You can look at it. I mean, about $1 trillion of bonds have seen their yields turn negative this week, meaning 27% of the world's investment grade debt is now sub zero. Sub zero, 27% of investment grade debt. You look at some of these sovereign bonds and across the whole spectrum, it's negative yield. You hold a bond for 10 years, let's say, and you get negative yield. You take that risk. What's going to happen to this country for the next 10 years? I mean, nobody can predict any country what they're going to be facing in 10 years from now, but you're actually going to lose out. I could tell you that. If you buy negative yielding debt, you got less coming on the other side. Who knows what's gonna to happen to the currency, to the empire, to every step along the way. This is just an update. I talked about San Francisco it was the last video or the one before it. Manhattan apartments haven't been this cheap to rent in 10 years. The median rental price plummeted 22% in November from a year earlier to 27.43 a month. Now that is, to be honest with you, an extremely high amount, $2,700, and that's the median price, but it's down 22% from the last year. This is one place that has been hit real, real hard, and it doesn't look like it's changing anytime soon. This was quite interesting, actually. I don't know if it's going to work, but multiple cities have done this. Restaurants are setting up shop in empty hotel suites. Chefs are pushing aside the beds and redefining the meaning of a private dining room. I think it's interesting to see how many businesses, whether that's movie theaters, whether that's hotels, or so many other, have to completely shift their business model, make changes in order to survive, or maybe even thrive. So I'm just 
bringing this here just to show you how there are many different businesses today that will be going under and others who might remain successful. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn about e-commerce, if you are interested in actually making money on the side, you want to learn the basics and all the way up to the intermediate level for free, I have an e-course, the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to understand the financial system, the ins and outs, everything is detailed in my two books. You can check it out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook instead, you can get that at themoneygps.com. But hang on a second. Have you seen this video? Because it's got the details you need to know. You can check it out right there. Click it. I'll see you there.